Hey guys, it's Dr. Price with Action Potential Mentoring, and I want to share with you the top five mistakes that I have seen students make over the last six years of working with over 1,700 students to crush the USMLE. So point number one is most students don't do enough questions. And everybody always says, oh, I'm doing so many, I'm working so hard, I'm putting in all the hours. But the thing is, is there's a rule called the 10,000 hour rule. And so this rule has been around for decades. And what it is, is that anybody to reach an elite level of mastery of a skill or a concept, it generally is accepted that you need to reach 10,000 hours of purposeful study towards that task. So whether you're becoming a doctor or whether you're becoming a lawyer or whether you want to be a professional athlete, it takes about 10,000 hours to get there. And so my students, they do a version of the 10,000 hour rule called the 10,000 question rule. But the answer is not to just do 10,000 questions because you don't have time for that, obviously. And so what we do is we actually teach the reverse pyramid protocol, which helps tone down the amount of questions that you have to do, but it makes them 43% more effective. And so this is how students are able to get more bang for their buck while they're doing the practice questions themselves. So obviously you have to use UWorld. It's basically impossible to reach the upper echelon on the exam without it. But the key is how you actually use it. So we're gonna get into that in just a minute. Point number two is most students use way too many resources. And so most everybody has almost a seemingly endless supply of resources that they feel they need to use when prepping for the USMLE. And so the key is not which resources you use, it's how that you use the resources. That's really the most important thing to understand because think about it. If everybody across the entire country has access to the exact same study resources, then it must matter more how you use it rather than that you use it. And so some of the techniques that we teach our students include the reverse pyramid protocol that I touched on previously, scaled repeatability, the UAMP learning curves, and then way more. And so if you haven't heard of these methods, don't feel bad. It's really not your fault because most of the top performing med students are not going to share the exact steps that they use to get there because it's going to create more competition for them. So that's something to keep in mind. One of the next biggest problems with most students med school prep is that they follow what everyone else is doing and that causes entropic lag. And so what that means is that you start getting bogged down by having way too many random approaches to what you're doing. And so you start to feel lost in the sauce. And so most people study in a random way and that's why they get random results. And so if you're not using optimized protocols, you can guarantee that your competition is. And so just as a little screenshot here, I shared uh, the first page of one of our protocols so that you can see that this is in depth of exactly which steps that you should be taking. We take this very, very seriously. This is not an area of your life that you should leave up to chance. Point number four is most people don't put enough emphasis on their focus optimization as well as anxiety management. And so if everybody's got somewhere between four to 14 hours per day to study for this exam, you have to maximize the amount of impact that you can actually have with those four to 14 hours. And so especially if you're an M3 and you're on rotations, you don't have time to be doing inefficient study techniques because you have to be performing at your best at all times outside of the hospital. And so I know you're tired. I know that you have a lot going on. You have research underway. You have connections that you have to make. So you got to make your study time as valuable as possible. And it all starts with back on step one. If you don't prepare for step one more optimally, then you're going to be struggling for step two when it really counts. And so it's really called step two because it builds off of step one. So one of the books that I recommend for my students is How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. It's by Dale Carnegie. It's absolutely phenomenal. And it really dives deep into anxiety management for high performers. So we have a ton of video on our members area about this exact topic because I feel that there is so much that you can optimize about anxiety and focus that you need to be implementing these techniques because if you're not, you know your competition will be. And so your goal is to become the best version of yourself and not have to compete with other people because you have more potential. If you've never looked into biohacking, if you've never looked into emotion management, then you need to because this is a time in your life where the utmost levels of performance are absolutely required. And so not to scare you, but to give you some insight, I have literally seen a student that was averaging for weeks above 80% on their practice exams. And she took a uh, UWorld block, she was scoring 85, 86, went into her actual exam itself, and she failed the exam. And 
it's really frustrating because we dive deep and we found out that this was purely because of her emotions getting out of control during the exam. She took it again and blew her prior performance out of the water. But it's because before that we worked on anxiety management, she was just doing random things. She wasn't optimizing her emotions down to the core. And so that's super, super important. And then lastly, not having a mentor in a high performance community is absolutely something that can hinder you when you're preparing for the USMLE. And so since the dawn of time, the most effective method of achieving the top levels of performance has been to have a mentor. Like I wrote, Alexander the Great had Aristotle. Aristotle had Socrates. Socrates had Plato. There's a reason why that there are these lineages that have existed over time of the highest performing individuals. It's because they were directly mentored and learned from somebody that had done it before them. And so if the greatest achievers in history have had mentors, why don't you? Michael Jordan, best basketball player of all time. He had a coach. He had a mentor. And so it's not enough to have an M3 or an M4 simply help you through the process because they only had an N equals one experience with the USMLE. And so what worked for them has a good chance of not working for you because they only know their own experience. And so if they haven't coached close to 2000 people through this process and they haven't built an entire community of high performing individuals, there's a good chance that they're not qualified to give you the advice for this is which is the most critical time in your entire life. So if you want to dive deeper into these concepts, if any of this resonated with you, I'm looking for students that meet three criteria. Number one, you have to be willing to put in the work. If you're not, I can't help you straight up. Number two, you have to be coachable. If you're receptive to feedback and you're able to implement with speed, then you're the type of person I want to work with. And then number three, you have to be willing to be held accountable because I'm going to call you out. I'm going to tell you if you're not putting in the effort, hey, listen, you got to step it up, man. And so that's really the vibe of the program. We have the Action Potential Accelerator program that is for people that fit this criteria that want to reach the next level of their own performance. And so if you're hardworking and you're looking for a better way to get through med school, crush the USMLE, crush Comlex, it would be my honor to help you succeed. So I hope this presentation was insightful, taught you one or two things, and got you ready to grind. So with that, I'll talk to you soon and look forward to your application.